have the grace to live rightly do resolutions you will have resolutions upon resolution you will still fall because the spirits have mastered how man functions they know man there are buttons they will press and man must respond they have studied man for many generations and it's not just about man in a generic sense they know your great grandfather they know your grandfather they know your father they know that 90 percent of you is like your father because abraham loved fair women isaac loved fair women jacob loved fair women there are certain things that obey the laws of dna they know what to touch to make you fall the only way you will defy the protocol is when a grace is absorbed that's why many people struggle in the flesh trying to please god it's not possible many people struggle to stand it's not possible there is something that will bring you down the only thing that will make you stand is the grace that you have appropriated if you appropriate the grace to live right everybody can be in sin you will live as if sin does not exist because not everybody is sinning you are the one assuming that everybody is sinning not everybody is sinning not everybody is coming not everybody is lying not everybody is fornicating there are people that don't even know it exists because grace has made it so so if a man fail in life it's his fault the reason is because what should make you succeed have already been supplied it is your ability to lay hold on it that determines whether you succeed or not and the way to do it is what I want to show you this morning the first way to appropriate grace is to go to the fountain of grace himself and ask for it. Grace doesn't fall on you. You take possession of it. Because it's available does not mean you have it. The Bible said in John chapter 1 verse 14 that Jesus is full of grace and truth. In verse 17 he said that the law kept by Moses but grace and truth came by our Lord Jesus Christ. So grace is now available because you have Jesus. But that grace is available does not mean you have it. So Paul was now teaching in Hebrews 4.12. He now said, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and help in times of need. That means every time a man wants to grow in grace, he must appear before the throne and ask for it. The problem with many people is that they want to grow in grace, but they are assuming that one day things will just change. If you don't ask, you will never have. That's why I said, ask, you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be open unto you. So if you need grace in a particular area of your life, don't be proud. Tell the Lord, Lord, grant me grace. Lord, grant me grace. I want to, you have asked me to preach the gospel, but I can't share. I don't have utterance to share. Lord, grant me grace for utterance. If you don't ask, you will never grow. Many people think an encounter will happen to them, an angel will appear on the mountain, and they will step into a dimension. Many times, all you need to do is just to ask. The prodigal son, as prodigal as he was, was wise to know how to take possession of reality. He asked the father and he took now, the one who was always diligently serving the father was at home and he had nothing. When the prodigal son squandered his inheritance, which is not what you should do, by the way, he still knew the power of asking because whether you receive or not is not a function of whether it's available. It is the heart of the father that makes it available. He said, no, I won't remain here. I will go back to my father. And while he was a distant away, the father ran to him, hugged him, kissed him, gave him a signet ring. I thought this guy no longer have inheritance. Inheritance is not one. The guy knew. The inheritance is not one. The one he took is the portion the father gave him. There are many more portions. And when he came back, the father gave him the ring again. And threw a feast. And the other brother came and was angry. I've been with you here laboring. I've not even had one day of celebration with my friends. My brother who went to squander all your resources, you are celebrating. The father said, but you never asked. You never asked. I didn't know you wanted to throw a party. 
Because in the realm of God now, in the realm of grace, you are not doing what you are doing to be approved. You are already approved, accepted, and justified. So anything you are doing now, God assumes you are doing it because you love it. Because we are called to enjoy the glorious life. So if I'm preaching now, I'm not preaching to please God. In grace, I'm pleased of God. That's why I said in Romans 5 verse 1, he said, being freely justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm not fasting so that God will approve of me. I'm not praying for God to approve of me. There are realms that we get into fasting and praying because it opens up my spirit. But everything I need is already available. I only need to ask and take it. If I am doing something, hoping that the Father will see what I'm doing and give it to me, I will never have anything. That's why you see many intercessors praying for 30 years, yet their life can't prove anything. Because they are praying, hoping that one day they will gain stature and things will begin to happen. Meanwhile, somebody else who has not grown, he's a master of asking, Lord, I need A. Lord, I need B. Lord, I need C. And he's walking in abundance. And you are wondering, what, 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 how can this guy who started yesterday be succeeding? The guy who started yesterday knows how to ask. You, you started 20 years ago, but you've never asked. So he told the son, but you never asked. If you asked, you would have had it. Because if you ask, you will receive. The same applies to grace. You are struggling with sin. Instead of asking for the grace to live above sin, you are telling yourself, no, I will go on seven days fast. Even the devil knows that after fasting, it will not work. It is when you fast that your spiritual antenna will be open. And as you step out on the seventh day, he will import a Caribbean lady. And the moment you say, hi, the whole mountain you are built will crumble because the flesh profits nothing. You say, no, I'll bring a new strategy. And the day you bring a new business strategy, the strategy would have worked, but the devil touch the climate and rain fell and there was a flood so there was no light for three months meanwhile your strategy is built on Nepal Christians don't like simple things they want it to be hard so that they can take the merit I labored I labored I labored I have labored I have labored you want to take the glory you will never because they, it's not designed for you to take the glory the reason some people fast is so that when they preach, they'll tell you, I fasted for four years. And because I fasted, something has happened to me. How many years have you fasted? Ah, you have not started. <laughs> Let me tell you, I live a fasted life. I fasted for five years straight. From 2012 to 2017. I was doing my master's fasting. I'm not talking against fasting. But I'm telling you, with all we do, we have a background knowledge. That this thing, this is how it works. If you don't ask, you will not have. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly. I fast so that my spirit can be sensitive. But what I need, I ask for. I know how it works. Many never ask. That masturbation you are struggling with, have you troubled the throne of grace for the grace to live above it? No. You think when you fast for 21 days, it will work. You think when, when you finish laboring in the flesh, the verdict is constant. The flesh profits nothing. You are going through poverty. You are laboring with human connection. They have given you 30 promises. No one works. And you have never asked for grace. You have never asked for grace to succeed. You are not yet married. And they told you there is Brazilian wig today. Ah! When you wear that wig, anybody that sees you will say, Kai. And then you have 10 Brazilian wigs now. You have 24 foundation in your wardrobe. All the mascaras and all the eyelash trimming. You have done it. Now you are 33. Does it not occur to you that there is help that you are not accessing? Does it not occur to you that there is abundance that you have not tapped into? You see, ask. Ask. Many sons laboring in the father's house, but they are struggling because they've never asked. They've never asked. You want to grow in grace? You must become a master of asking. You must become a master. Because when you ask for grace, the first thing that appears is mercy. The reason is because mercy comes to pull down the mountain of qualification. Mercy wants to let you know that whether you qualify or you don't qualify is not a factor here. So long as you have asked, you must have it. 
That's why the first thing that appears is mercy. And his mercies are new every morning. And if his mercies are new every morning, it means I will ask every morning. I will ask every morning. That's how men grow in grace. You don't grow in grace just by climbing a mountain and fasting for 40 days. That's part of it. But brothers and sisters, if you don't ask, you will not receive. I know you have complained to everybody about the problem. But have you asked for the grace to remedy the problem? He said, who is this mountain that standeth before Zerubbabel? Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Who is this mountain? He said, this mountain shall be turned to a plain, not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the living God. If you will ask, grace can make your mountain a plain. But many have never asked. Many have never asked. Jesus was so assured. He said, Lazarus is dead. Okay. He waited for four days. After four days, he strode into the place. Oh, if you have been here, our brother would not have died. Did I not tell you? That if you believe, you will see the glory of God. I am the resurrection and the life. You will think he was bragging. But that confidence and audacity was predicated on his confidence that whenever he asks, he will receive. So when he finished saying all those big things, he now came to the grave. I thought he would say, the resurrection is here. He now came to the grave and said, I thank you, O oh Father, that you always hear me. That means the confidence of the Christ was predicated on the fact that he knows that God is a giver. And whenever a son asks, he must receive. Lazarus, come forth. And he said, him that was dead came back to life because he knew the power of asking. Elohim Madonai Elohim Madonai